building an infrared LED pin. Now this is to be used with the uh, Wii project that was originally created by Johnny Chung Lee and where you can build your own interactive pipe board. In this video you'll learn how to build your own interactive pin. First of all, choose a marker that has a removable cap, something like the Avery Mark slot. This is a good uh, dry erase marker. It fits a AA battery just fine. And what you want to do is disassemble the internal parts of the uh, marker. So remove the cap and use a pair of pliers to remove the felt tip on the end. Sometimes where the point is, there is a, a little staple or pin that is used to hold the felt in place. Uh, be sure you remove that if one is found in your pin. Now what are the parts that you need? Well, you need some solder. You're going to need a AA battery. Of course, the dry erase marker that uh, we just disassembled. You also need an infrared LED. Uh, you're going to need a switch, a single pole, single throw, momentary switch, uh, which is normally off, and so that the switch is, uh, you have to push down the button on the switch in order for the switch to close or make contact. I took a spring from a, a ballpoint pin. I also have some wire from a uh, Cat6 uh, uh, patch cable and that's what the wiring I'm going to use to connect all of the pieces to and then we also have a piece of a rubber hose there we're going to use with a spacer to take up the excess space that's not used by the battery and we'll need a little electrical tape to dress things up when we're finished so let's take a look at the LED first of all the LED is a diode which means that the electrons only flow in one direction and so there is a positive and a negative terminal. You can tell the negative terminal. It'll be the larger pin inside the LED if you looked inside it. And so that's going to be the side that goes to the negative terminal of our battery. And the smaller terminal is going to go to the positive battery terminal. The switch has to be mounted inside the, uh, the marker. So choose a drill, one that you can have it large enough to slide the switch inside the marker and in a smaller drill that you can put the threaded portion of the switch in place so that you can secure it into the pin. An electric drill isn't necessary. I simply used my hands and the drill and twisted it until it went through the plastic is soft enough to do so. Here you can see that uh, the holes have been drilled. I've taken a utility knife now and I will trim this excess plastic away and I'm going to insert the push button switch into the marker. Here the marker has the push button switch installed and I'll secure that with the nut and washer that is supplied. Once I've mounted the switch I want to try to get the lugs positioned as you see here. It's easier to mount the wires because we're going to be sliding the LED into this marker and we're going to have one of the leads from the LED going into the switch. Now here's your LED. Um, one of the things you can see here is that I have trimmed a uh, some insulation off of a solid core wire. That's a great uh, way to insulate the conductors or the leads off the LED and so you could choose to do that if you cho if you wish. Uh, also you can see that I need to tin or solder the the braided wire that comes from my patch cable and I want to make sure I use braided wire because it will flex better and will not break as easily as a solid or solid stranded wire and also where I'm going to solder uh, to the LED, notice how I have bent the, uh, the leads so that whenever I solder them, they're going to be a little stronger fit. Now that you see that I've uh, uh, soldered the leads and the wires onto the LED, here is another means by which you could insulate the LEDs, and that's just to take a little piece of electrical tape 
and wrap it around the leads to insulate them so that they don't come in contact with each other. Here they are wrapped. Next, we're going to insert the LED and the wires into your pin. And notice that the copper wire of the one lead is coming into a lug on the momentary switch. I'll fully seat the uh, LED and I'm going to slide another wire in to the other lug and you can see both wires coming out to the left end of the, of the uh, pin and those are going to be the wires that we're going to connect to our battery. Uh, in this next slide here you'll see that I have bent the wires over prior to soldering and this makes it a better connection and easier to solder. Notice also that the infrared LED is partially inserted into the tip of the pin. Now that little rubber hose I was talking about, what I like to do is just lay out the hose, the spring that I cut in half from the ballpoint pin, and try to see what needs to be fit. And I've cut that rubber hose so that it will take up the excess space between the switch and what's needed for the battery. Etc. I've now soldered the um, wires to the springs. Now look at the lower when it went through the spacer. One thing that I did do here is I took my drill and I drilled a hole through the rubber hose and I fed the wire coming into that rubber hose uh, through the rubber hose before soldering it. Now this is the positive terminal. This is going to be the one that's going to go down next to the switch but the wire helps to hold the spring and keeps the spring from sliding in too deep into that uh, uh, spacer or losing contact with the battery. Now once everything has been assembled you can test your LED uh, with a digital camera. You can use a digital camera or a cell phone camera. They work just fine. Uh, essentially with the button not being depressed the LED should be off and when you depress the button, the LED should light. Remember, infrared light is not visible to us uh, through, our, through our eyes. We need a source like a digital camera to help us do that. The finished LED is uh, simply uh, wrapped a little bit of electrical tape around the uh, opening, around the switch to kind of cover the hole I had there where the lugs were. And the other thing I did is I took a little bit of uh, super glue um, fingernail glue and just to put right at the very edge of the LED to hold it in place. So here you go with a completed LED uh, infrared pin that you can use with Johnny Lee's Wiimote and you'll have your own interactive whiteboard.